Hey, welcome back to the Granada Forum Radio Program, ladies and gentlemen, with my co-host Nick Pearson, our special guest Paul, and uh, who uh, will be back short. Uh, he'll be back uh, in another time. And we want to thank uh, Mr. Richard Kane, our wonderful guest Deborah Tavares. Deborah, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, Wendy, Nick, thank you uh, so much for this hour. Uh, this is an emergency. Uh, this is sadly some information that uh, needs to get out far and wide. So for all of you that are listening, we've had many, many people contact StopTheCrime.net asking how they can help get the information out. Well, how you can help get the information out is getting YouTubes up that will be available by Nick on Granada Forum. Help get this information out far and wide. Because what you are going to hear next is something that is just going to boggle your minds as it did our research team. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is artificially engineered storm surges and artificially engineered sea level rise. And this has all been by informed consent. We've all agreed to the climate action plans. And we're going to talk about that because we know for a fact that geoengineering, a.k.a. weather weapons, is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate that is creating the climate changes and the reason behind all the climate action plans and resilient plans adopted in every city, town, village, state, country, and nation throughout the world. These are climate action plans and resilient plans. For all of you that are listening, you need to type in and find out what your plan is in your area. That plan will outline the type of weather events that you are going to experience because they're creating them. So for an example, uh, I would type in Santa Rosa, California, Climate Action Plan and Resilient Plan, and I would find a couple hundred page document at least that would outline uh, the types of, of um, weather assaults we're going to have and uh, what we're going to be required to do about that is to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. But tonight we're talking about something far more sinister, far more serious that is now uh, revealing itself and um, I'm going to go over that now. We have a military takeover, a global military takeover. And we have found documents, it's entitled Military Expert Panel Report, Sea Level Rise and the U.S. Military's Mission. Now this is of all branches of the military globally. So the question is, what do we do when all branches of the military, all government agencies, all departments, all officials and offices exist in a de facto status in name only. What do we do? We know that the United States federal government was dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9th of 1933, declared by President Roosevelt. We know that the receivers of the United States bankruptcy were the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. We also know, when we've looked at Senate Report 93549, that we are, all of us, the people, we are the enemy. Hence the reason why we're being poisoned with every type of delivery system available in our cosmetics, in the dyes in our clothes, in the air, the water, the food, the vaccine. Our minds are being poisoned by disinformation in school. And the list is absolutely endless. The government exists today in name only. And we are in some very serious, serious danger. I'm going to read a quote. Uh, and this is a declaration of war uh, upon us uh, in a, a bill that we received from Rothschild. Now, I say Rothschild when I receive my electric bills because Rothschild controls and runs the electric companies throughout the United States. And this came in a bill 
out of Southern California Edison, a.k.a. Edison International. And we have the bill posted on StopTheCrime.net under Hot Topics. I would refer everyone to it. It is a declaration of war. It talks about uh, climate change as a new normal, and it talks about we can no longer uh, conduct business as usual, that business as usual is no longer uh, sustainable. And here is a quote from the bill, and this is actually from the Edison CEO, Pedro Pabrazio, the current uh, structure, he says, the current structure is unsustainable and new approaches are needed to mitigate climate risks. He tells us that uh, fire season is all year round and is our new normal. He also said there must be a sharing of the increasing risk of climate change impacts across all of society. A sharing of climate change impacts across society. So let's talk about sea level rise and let's talk about storm surge and how this is all being manipulated. And uh, we're going to go over that. Uh, we, we need to understand that sea level rise is being created artificially. And we're going to uh, read uh, how we've discovered this to you, where we found this, and what uh, you need to know about this fact of our reality. Uh, this, uh, this is not part of the military document that you're going to hear me refer to uh, in a minute, but this came out of the NASA war plan that is on StopTheCrime.net from page 59. And uh, while the NASA war plan, plan was presented as a PowerPoint a few months before 9-11, um, we've spent many hours uh, with many, many whistleblowers on going through this plan. And I'm going to read to you right now what has happened and what they're doing and what they're using. It's called the Blast Wave Accelerator. And again, it is discussed in the NASA war document on Stop the Crime. And it is likely one of the aspects that's being deployed to increase the new modeling for higher sea levels, the creation of higher waves, and the daily increased heavier lapping of the waves against all of the coastal seashores that uh, cause increased erosion and is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's coastal sea shores. The blast wave accelerator is an older technology but it's part of causing the coastal seashore erosion called sea level rise. We're going to talk about the newer technology in a moment, but I'm going to discuss in detail how the blast wave accelerator came about. Again, you can find it on page 59 of the NASA war plan and on stopthecrime.net. They tell us on page 59 that the blast wave accelerator is global precision strike on the cheap, no barrel, excellent stealth, no plume, being worked at Albert, uh, Aberdeen and the NASA uh, MSFC for lofting of fuel and nanosats. And here's what the blast wave accelerator was created to do. In 1944, the U.S. military worked with the New Zealand government and developed a devastating tsunami bomb to send, and I find this interesting, to send a 33-foot wave crashing into Japan's coast designed to destroy coastal cities of, of Japan, a top-secret tsunami bomb from World War II. This was the planned backup weapon if Fat Boy and Little Boy, the code names for the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan in World War II, had failed to detonate. So had those bombs failed to detonate, they were going to use 
this blast wave accelerator. The code name is Project SEAL, S-E-A-L. You can look it up. Code name Project SEAL is a weapon of mass destruction, and it relied on a series of 10 large offshore blasts and were tested off the coast of New Caledonia at the time and Auckland, now being worked on as the blast wave accelerator. So what you're going to hear me say next is as diabolical as what you're going to hear me say. The military in all branches has signed on to the mission of fighting against climate change, which is a fraud. They are in the process, as we speak, of relocating, relocating all, all low-lying military operations worldwide to higher ground because they know that sea level rise and um, the other aspects of the erosion on the coastlines is being deliberately waged upon us. This is war. This is absolutely war. Now, if you go to StopTheCrime.net and you go to Email Blast Out, you're going to uh, read some of what you're going to hear me say, and you're going to be able to link up to the document that I'm going to be going over for the remainder of this broadcast. And this is a request to get this uh, information out far and wide. What we need to understand is how all of this has happened, and much of it has happened, by policies that have been conceived through consensus, consensus and insidiously implemented without the public's knowledge and informed consent based upon bogus consensus science. Now, why am I talking about consensus? Because the military document called Military Expert Panel Report, Sea Level Rise and the U.S. Military's Mission, talks about how the entire document was based on consensus. So what is uh, consensus. Well, the definition of consensus depends on participants having shared values and goals and on having a broad agreement on specific issues and overall direction. Consensus implies that everyone accepts and supports the decision and understands the reasons for making those decisions. And you're going to hear often about advisory meetings. These are all consensus-based. They're facilitated by trained and manipulated trained leaders that create the illusion that your ideas are being crafted into policies for your community, and they are not. Many of you have heard through the years the discussion about the Delphi technique, which is a format of manipulation and control and promotes the consensus plot. What is this? It's tightly monitored control of citizens in attendance in the manipulation necessary to create the illusion that we the people are creating these policies. Again, we are not. Now, I've covered many, many times about the climate action plans and the resilient plans. Again, I can't underscore enough for all of you to listen to some of the YouTubes. Type in Deborah Tavares. Climate Action Plans, again, go to StopTheCrime.net, to our Climate Action Plan page. But more importantly, look at your Climate Action Plan in your community because they've adopted it. And uh, I'm going to read to you, uh, and, and basically you need to understand that the Climate Action Plans are designed to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, they want our greenhouse gas emissions ultimately to decline to near zero or below zero. There is no life with those requirements of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. This is a genocide program. So I'm going to read to you what I found out of a Russian document about uh, climate action uh, out of Russia. And this is very, very interesting. Because I've got to ask this question, what do we do? when the military has adopted climate action plans and resilient plans that are crafted by Rothschild and Rockefeller and the international bankers. Again, the United States was turned over 
uh, to the international bankers. So what do we do as we start to morph into a reality where people will no longer be able to survive and when our very military is coming after us as well and part of this plot? So let's, let's talk about what Russia has said about uh, climate. Uh, and here are some of the facts that they discuss. Trading carbon quotas is a pure, unadulterated myth, like trading air. Creating false emission quotas would provide a revenue source for all government budgets. I want to read that again. Creating a false emission quota would provide revenue source for all government budgets. That's what's happening. We're being deceived. So the Kyoto Protocol that they refer to is an intergovernmental gulag with interventionalism at the level of international governance. So they are saying that the climate action plans are creating international governance, and it is. It goes into our smart cities and into the resilient cities that I have discussed in detail, and I will continue to cover in more detail as uh, we go forward. But the Russians also tell us that the Kyoto Protocols would tighten environmental requirements and allow corporate control while phasing out smaller, inefficient industries. Also, the protocols were not based on principles of justice and equality unless signed and ratified by all countries. Existing environmental regulations are inadequate for monitoring emissions which is, of course, false. There would be a trade-off between economic growth and all countries' emissions obligations. And that's what we're seeing occur here in the United States. There is no link between climate and CO2. Hence, the Kyoto Protocol is a scientific scam. Even if the protocol is implemented, impact on climate would be insignificant. The Kyoto Protocol is part of the EU's conspiracy to increase cost of comp competitors' goods via greening. Now, I'm going to tell you that we've researched this intensely, and we have found documents from the World Bank that have already started and are creating investment strategies to make enormous amounts of money and profits by creating global disruption, the creation of a completely new apparatus globally of all of our cities and all of our markets. And I can only say that what you're hearing is important because we have to learn the truth and recognize the danger that we all face and look at what solutions we may or may not have. So I say that because we're in trouble. We are in significant trouble. So we're going to talk about what's behind the sea level rise and the coastal erosion. But first I'm going to read to you an executive order on climate and resilient in international development. This was September 23rd of 2014. Again, it's an executive order on Climate Resilient International Development, and I quote, by the authority vested in me as president by the Constitution, again, we don't have a Constitution, sadly, anymore. It's a corporation. And the laws of the United States of America, and to safeguard security and economic growth, protect the sustainability and long-term durability of the United States development work in vulnerable countries and promote sound decision-making and risk management is hereby ordered as follows. Now let me be clear. We are not safeguarding vulnerable countries. We are dissolving countries. We are literally creating wars and killing millions of people. All you have to do is look at some of the types of things that our military is using, not only overseas, but on us as well. And I would certainly... Uh, instruct everybody to look up Operation Crimson Mist, Operation Crimson Mist, to understand the psychotronics involved and why so many people are unable to see 
the danger that we are all in. Operation Crimson Mist is one way you can discover that. But they go on to say in this executive order, the world must re reduce greenhouse gas emissions to prevent the most dangerous consequences of climate change. Even with increased efforts to curb these emissions, we must prepare for and adapt to the impacts of climate change. So they're saying even if we curb our emissions, we're not going to stop this. Of course not. The Russians know that. You just heard me tell you what the Russians said. No amount of curbing greenhouse gas emissions is going to prevent climate change, which is artificially induced by the geoengineering programs. This goes on, executive order, to tell us the adverse impacts of climate change, including sea level rise, increases in temperatures, more frequent extreme pre precipitation and heat events, more severe droughts, and increased wildfire activity, along with other impacts of greenhouse gas emissions, such as ocean acidification, threaten to roll back decades of progress in reducing poverty and improving economic growth in vulnerable countries, compromise the effectiveness and resilience of the U.S. development assistance, degrade security, and risk um, inter-transnational and international conflict over resources. Executive Order Number 13514 of October 5th of 2009 Federal Leadership in Environmental Energy, Economic, and Performance, and Executive Order 13653 of November 1st of 2013, preparing the United States for the impacts of climate change, established a strong foundation for coordinated and consistent action to incorporate climate resilient considerations into every policy and every procedure throughout the federal government. Executive departments and agencies with international development programs must now build upon the recent progress made pursuant to these orders by systematically factoring climate resilient considerations in to international development strategies, planning, programming, investments, and related funding decisions, including the planning and the management of overseas facilities. This order requires the integration of climate resilient considerations into all United States international development work to the extent permitted by law. De dedicated U.S. climate change adaptation funds are critical to managing the risks posed by climate change impacts in vulnerable countries and coping with the magnitude of the consequences of accelerating climate change also requires enhanced efforts across the federal government's broader international development work. Consideration of current and future climate change impacts will improve the resilience of the federal government's broader international development plans, projects, investments, overseas facilities, related funding decisions. The United States will also promote a similar approach among relevant multilateral in entities in which it participates. So I'm not going to continue to read this all, but I'm going to conclude with this little paragraph. The international climate resilient actions required by this order complement efforts by the federal government to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at home and globally. The more greenhouse gas emissions are reduced, the less need there will be to adapt to the impacts of changing climate. So let's talk about what they're not talking about and let's explain this. Uh, it's important to understand, again, this is a massive artificially engineered plan of storm surges and sea level rise. It is literally a full-out um, assault on all coastal perimeters worldwide. 
So let's get into the American Bar Association, who's also uh, backing climate change. Uh, I'm going to read to you what they say in a short paragraph. And some of you might be shocked, and you need to be, but every agency, every department, everything has ascribed to enacting climate change in all levels of our military. So this is entitled, The Law of Adaptation to Climate Change, U.S. and International Aspects. And this is the American Bar Association, a comprehensive resource of laws aimed at increasing resilience and reducing vulnerabilities to climate change. This state-of-the-art uh, compendium, which is a brief summary of a larger work, examines how laws are being modified, finessed, or imagined to deal with the impacts of climate change. I'm going to repeat part of that. Laws are being modified, finessed, and they're being imagined. This is what the bar is saying to all of us. They are imagining all of this. And it is, a, it is a diabolical hoax, a global hoax. So let's move on. Let's talk about the advanced technology of creating uh, blast wave accelerators and tsunamis and uh, storm surge and sea level rise. And then we're going to go into how this has already affected coastal communities uh, around the coast globally. Recently, uh, as, as recent as February 3rd of 2018, we learned that there was a Russian super nuclear robotic submarine that could trigger a mega tsunami to wipe out Florida and the east coast of the U.S. We found out that the Russian super nuclear device could cause a mega tsunami which would be able to kill 100 million people in coastal areas like Florida and the eastern seaboard. We also were told back in March of 2017, reports from Russia indicate a new drone submarine would be aimed with a 100 megaton nuke warhead. Now this is very similar but far advanced over the blast wave accelerator that we talked about that was invented uh, and conceived in World War II. So now we've got this Russian um, super robotic submarine that can trigger a mega tsunami. So let's talk about that a little bit further. Uh, they go on to say that um, the Russians would be able to achieve extensive radioactive contamination. The weapon could, um, which is using a so-called cobalt bomb, a nuclear weapon designed to produce enhanced amounts of radi radioactive fallout compared to the regular atomic warhead. And they go on to tell us that the retired Air Force General Robert Keeler, former commander of the U.S. Strategic Command, has said the development of the underwater nuclear strike vehicle is one element of a troubling Russian strategic nuclear buildup. Uh, now, remember, the U.S. was going to use this back in World War II uh, to wipe out the shoreline of Japan. So the Russians certainly are working together, it would seem, with all the powers that are controlling this planet. They go on to tell us that Russian calls the system uh, Ocean Multipurpose System Status 6, and it can capture and it's capable of traveling underwater to distances of 6,200 miles, and it can submerge to depths of 3,280 feet and travel at speeds up to 56 knots. Even the Pentagon has confirmed that the new Russian nuclear delivery drone is real. The undersea drone, which carries an enormous nuclear warhead to destroy coastal cities and military bases was tested last month. I'm not going to continue with this article, but all you have to do is type in Russian super nuclear robotic submarine would trigger a mega tsunami to wipe out Florida, and you will find this information. 
So now let's talk about uh, what we know and what's been happening here along the California coastline and what's been happening around other coastlines throughout the world. Uh, recently, we discovered in Del Mar, Southern California, which is an extremely expensive, popular beach resort, that inside their city plans, their plans, their building codes, they are writing in an unpopular strategy due to sea level rise, and it's called planned retreat. So let's talk about what planned retreat means. It's a strategy that allows for the eventual removal, uh, which would be tantamount to financial ruin for property owners in the small, wealthy area of Del Mar in Southern California. Planned retreat is a managed retreat. It's a strategy of gradually removing all man-made structures, such as seawalls, homes, roads, and public buildings in advance of sea level rise. Now, they, they're worried because Del Mar has about 600 homes within the planned retreat area of sea level rise. So let's talk about something more diabolical that's happening along the coastlines and the other agencies that are involved besides the military. And we're going to talk about the military in a minute. The California Coastal Commission requires all coastal cities to have a sea rise adaptation plan and to include planned retreat as part of every coastal city's strategy. Failure to comply with this will result in the Coastal Commission refusing to certify cities' plans and in this instance, uh, they can rob the cities of local authority. They will not, cities will not be able to uh, get permits approved for developments such as sea walls, homes, businesses, roads, and other structures if they are within the Coastal Commission required approval zone. And the Coastal Commission would assume absolute authority of the city absolute authority. They go on to say that, um, that they are anticipating sea level rise due to climate change. And it's been acknowledged by scientists. And they go on to say they know that predicting the amount of sea level rise is difficult. But they say we may see a five foot rise in sea level earlier than we previously thought. They go on to tell us the California Ocean Protection Council adopted statewide guidance in March, this would be March of 2017, that recommends planning for a 7.1 foot sea level rise for Del Mar. And they go on to, the, the, to say that the seas could rise as much as 10 feet and Del Mar residents are saying no form of a planned retreat is practical for them because of the large number of homes involved, the extremely high property values. These homes start in the millions. They go up to 20 million and plus. And they say that there's a lack of space at higher elevations to move the entire small city to. A lack of space at higher elevations to move Del Mar in Southern California to higher ground. They go on to say, the city says global warming is real and sea level rise is a fact. The city's sustainability advisory board and a professor at Scripps Research Institute sent a letter to the city council uh, and said that um, it's becoming increasingly difficult, expansive and less productive as sea level rises. I hope that the Council will include managed retreat in the adaptation plan. They go on to say that Del Mar 
is working on its Coastal Resiliency Sea Level Rise Adaptation Plan and that they have a Sea Level Rise Technical Advisory Committee. So what I'm going to suggest is that every single one of you that is listening find out if you're in the coastal range area at all if you've got a sea level rise technical advisory committee. Again, this is all operated on consensus, all the Delphi technique spearheaded by trained facilitators that have already created all of these plans. So they go on to say in this uh, document that given the uncertainties of climate science and the efficiency of adaptation strategies, planned retreat will remain a strategy. Uncertainties, uncertainties. Yet, they're relocating and planning to relocate cities all over the world. Now let's talk about that. Uh, you can type in um, coastal city relocation sea level rise, and you will have a stream of cities that have already been relocated. And it is extremely unsettling, and it needs to be unsettling because that's what we face. So we discovered, too, that because of climate change, the U.S. is relocating an entire town, the Isle of Dijon Charles in Louisiana. And this is just the beginning, they're saying, and this was revealed in June of 2017. And here's what they continue to say, and this is the verbiage that I'm finding in the relocation of many villages and cities all around the coastal perimeters, for example, in Africa as well. But they talk about the lapping at the edges of their front yards and on the shorelines, the lapping. Okay? There's now just a little strip of land left. This is in Louisiana. That's all we have. There's water all around us. One of just 100 people who lives in this island, now they're, they're literally assaulting the smaller villages and smaller areas right now. But they are planning for sea level rise all along the Pacific coast, the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlantic coast, and all the coastlines globally. And they go on to say about this Louisiana problem that few outside know or care what's going on there. Well, now you know, and I would suggest you better start caring. This is war, and they are using blast wave accelerators. They're using the new... A strategy of the 300-foot tsunami bomb and more for coastal erosion worldwide and relocation. So they talk about the National Disaster Resilience um, Foundation and how the federal government uh, aimed to help communities and states recover from previous disasters and reduce future risks. So they're relocating small villages to reduce future risks. They go on to say on the other side of the U.S., a small village of approximately 300 people um, on the western edge of Alaska faces similar troubles, sea level rise. And uh, you can type this in for yourselves. I hope you are, and I hope that you are as stunned with this reality of the artificially created sea level rise and storm surges. This is all being engineered just like our weather, just like our weather. And I know what you're hearing me say sounds outrageous. It absolutely is outrageous. Read the documents. I am sharing with you what the documents tell us. And now I'm going to talk to you about uh, the warnings that we've had throughout the years for those of you that uh, knew uh, Rosalind Peterson with um, Agriculture Defense Coalition who ran a website uh, certainly uh, trying to warn everybody about the artificial created weaponized weather programs, 
uh, for years. She was trying to uh, make people aware what the U.S. Navy was doing along all the coastlines within the United States. And they pulled permits to decimate 11.7 million marine mammals, sea turtles, fish, and ocean habitats. And uh, she, you know, was certainly trying to tell us what was going on and the extinction plan that has been ongoing around the perimeter of the country already with our military. So now let's take a look at some of the information in the military document. This is, again, a note from the military expert panel, and it says, as military professionals who have spent uh, their entire adult lives surfing, serving the United States, we are concerned about the impact of sea level rise and what that is having and will have on the ability of our military infrastructure to sustain our nation's operating forces and fulfill strategic objectives. It is clear that we must do more to address these risks and do it soon. There is a growing number of studies exploring the actual and potential physical impacts of sea level rise on U.S. military installations. And these studies show that the risks are increasing at a faster rate than expected. Important questions remain only partially answered. One thing is clear. We cannot wait for perfect information. Are you listening to this? They can't wait for the perfect information before assessing the risks and impacts and responding in a way that will reduce the risks. Dealing with climate risks to operational effectiveness must therefore be a core priority of the military. The report looks out in time to assess the effects of sea level rise happening simultaneously across a broad range of military infrastructure domestically and globally, and the resulting cascading effects on the ability to train, mobilize, operate, and fulfill strategic objectives. The continued strength of the U.S. depends on having a clear-eyed assessment of risks and threats to the nation and addressing them well before they manifest themselves. I'm going to reread something we just said that... Um, they are dealing with climate risks, and they say that uh, they must, uh, the information uh, is not clear yet, but they must respond. goes on to tell us in this executive sum summary of this report that the capability rests on the assumption, uh, the assumption of climate stability, including the stability of 95,471 miles of coastline along with which 1,774 U.S. military sites reside across the globe. They go on to tell us that major transportation, command and control, intelligence and deployment hubs will face unrelenting erratic outages or curtailment of operations in the future due to sea level rise and storm surge. I'm going to add this now. This is war. This is a war strategy, just like the artificial creation of the weather. This is war. This is a war on our coastlines. They go on to say that the ability of the Department of Defense to fulfill mission requirements will be more costly and take more time and be hindered by a lack of planned for assets at crucial junctures. As these threats to coastal military infrastructure play out over the century, they will become strategic vulnerabilities that could affect our ability to detour our enemies, defend our interests, and support our friends at a time and place of our choosing. And it may not be a choice in the future to make these changes. They go on to say that to use military uh, prevalence, the theater is, in essence, flooding. The theater of operations is flooding. Adjusting to the rapidly changing theater will be absolutely critical for the U.S. military to maintain its ability to fulfill its missions and for the United States 
to adequately pursue its national security interests. At the center of this adjustment are coastal military installations. Their infrastructure and the adjacent supporting communities, adjacent supporting communities, folks, that form the backbone of this global military force. This report is not, listen to this, I've just told you that they are planning to relocate all low-lying military operations globally. And now this is what they say. This report is not an exa exhaustive look at all of the climate risks and vulnerabilities coastal military installations are facing. However, it synthesizes studies by the Department of Defense, Congress, and independent researchers explores a range of case studies, analyzes what these findings mean for military readiness, operations, and strategies, and lays out areas that deserve more attention. I'll read a few more um, pieces of information out of this diabolical uh, report. I hope all of you are clearly understanding that all branches all departments, all agencies are fighting against climate change, which is consensus science, not based on facts, facts. And I told you what the Russians think about this. And it goes on to say that the Department of Defense Directive on Climate Change Adaptation and Resilience in 2016 provides policy guidance and assigns responsibilities on managing the risks associated with climate change. The Department of Defense and the Adaptation Plan directs the Department of Defense components to assess the effects of climate change on the department's mission and to take into account those effects where developing plans and implementing them. They go on to say that uh, the Department of Defense goes about its war mission, acquisition programs, readiness plans, and construction projects and securities based on climate change. Read some more. In April of 2016, the Department of Defense released a report entitled Regional Sea Level Scenarios for Coastal Risk Management Managing the Uncertainty of future sea level change and extreme water levels for Department of Defense coastal sites worldwide. Led by SERDPA, S-E-R-D-P, the report was developed by experts from the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, NOAA, the United States Geological Survey, many universities and companies, and other public institutions. The report, one of the most expansive publicly released efforts to date, details the methodology used to develop a range of scenarios that could serve as a starting point for vulnerability assessment, as well as planning and decision making for coastal risk management. The report accompanies a database of scenarios covering 1,774 Department of Defense sites around the world. It leaves decisions related to uncertainties for policymakers open. The report notes that a risk management framework leaves no room for inaction in the face of these changes. This report certainly should have everyone looking at the reality that we have now moved into. This is diabolical, and I hope that all of you share this coastal global attack that I am discussing with you now far and wide. I'm going to continue. Marine Corps Base in North Carolina and the Marine Corps Recruit Depot on Paris Island, South Carolina, 
are illustrative cases. Both serve as key training facilities for the Marines, as well as other members of the armed forces. Under plausible high-risk scenarios, low-lying areas of these facilities could be underwater around a third of the year, which could have implications for amphibious assault training and other essential training functions at these installations. Short-term alteration or cancellation of training activities due to flooding or erosion can have broader repercussions for monthly or yearly training schedules, as these changes may necessitate, necessitate costly modifications to training facilities or changes in support of personnel scheduling. The risks of sea level rise pose to military installations can also impact the ability to effectively carry out operations, such as meeting the demand for search and rescue and humanitarian assistance, disaster response, or countering narcotics trafficking. For example, under plausible highest case sea level rise scenarios, half of the land area of the U.S. Coast Guard Station Sandy Hook in New Jersey would be flooded by extreme tides, they say by 2070. Well, they're giving us that date so that it feels like it's a long ways out, but they are absolutely controlling the effects now. They go on to say that this can significantly impede law enforcement and search and rescue operations in the area which are launched from the base. Naval Air Station Key West, Florida, houses a joint uh, task force that plays a major role in coordinating counter-narcotics operations in Latin America and the Caribbean. This report goes on. Sea level rise and resulting storm surge are the two largest threats to our waterfront infrastructure. For example, they explained that they were planning to lengthen a Los Angeles-class submarine to convert it to a training platform, and that this will entail cutting the submarine in half. During this process, the submarine will sit in a dry dock with its interior open. Officials explained that they were concerned about possible storms and associated storm surge, noting that if salt water were allowed to flood the submarine's systems, it would result in severe damage. Such damage would delay completion of the submarine's lengthening by three to four months. Officials from another Navy shipyard that they said they visited stated that flooding of a submarine in dry dock could result in catastrophic damage inside the submarine and additional severe damage to equipment on the floor of the dry dock. They go on to say key operational hubs outside the United States also face significant exposure to sea level rise. I could go on and on, and I am at the end of my time for this show. All I can tell all of you right now is that the unimaginable is imaginable now. All United States governments have been resolved. We are the enemy, and every single branch of all military operations, all government agencies, departments, officials, and offices exist in a de facto status in name only. And remember, geoengineering, which are weather weapons, a deliberate, large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate that is creating the climate change. And I read to you, I read to you what Russia said. Uh, it's a hoax. Uh, CO2 is a hoax. So I would ask all of you to go to StopTheCrime.net, go to the home page, click on Email Blastouts to get to the document 
uh, link that you've heard me go through and the description and discussion of the blast wave accelerator as it was discovered in the NASA war plan on StopTheCrime.net. And you will also be able to read the facts that the Russians are saying that carbon, trading carbon quotas is a pure, unadulterated myth like training air. And they go on again to tell us there is no link between climate and CO2 and that the Kyoto Protocol is part of the EU's conspiracy to increase cost of competitors' goods via greening. We are in a global transition, an absolute global transition of such magnitude and displacement of populations everywhere. Another reason that we are being desired off the coastlines is because of the cooking of humanity, the interview I did. And sadly, you didn't hear the rest of the story. But type in the cooking of humanity and take a look at that map that I am holding. You need to understand that the primary source of negative oxygen ion generation is the seashore. The waves of the salty surf crash onto the coastline rocks and generate massive negative ion and it supplies the nations with good vibrations. And we are far less capable of being chemically depressed and mind controlled. This is why they want us off the coastlines also. All right, Deb, thanks for coming on. Uh, we'll have you back on again here in a couple of weeks. And thanks everybody for listening to the show. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Deborah. It was great. Absolutely barn burner. Fantastic. Thank you.